Hello, my name is Cal Maloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, on the 11th of November, Non-Aggression Day, I'm here to spread the message of freedom. And, of course, if you're a veteran, a former hitman of the state, just remember, you didn't join to protect your political rulers. You didn't join to defend the violent monopolies of the state. If you did join, you joined to protect the people you love and care for here back home. Because it's here at home where we're losing our freedoms. Not overseas, not in foreign tax farms you've never been to. Here at home, in the very community you were misled into leaving behind and unprotected. So hopefully one day you have the courage to face the real tyranny, foreign and domestic here, and most importantly it's domestic, at our very front doorstep, and face that tyranny and stand up to that real tyranny. So with that, um, hopefully you guys enjoy this content for today. Start subscribing if you can please, and take good care. See you guys at the victory party. Alright, so, so the solution then is, is this that. Uh, you universalize the principle. That's called the non-aggression principle, right? If it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate violence, that includes government. And all government is, is just a group of individuals who claim the authority to initiate violence onto anyone in a geographic region, right? That's why you don't have the freedom to associate or disassociate. Yeah. One opinion forced into everyone. Either everyone hates cannabis or they like it. Yeah. Right? You don't have the freedom to say, you know what, in this apartment complex that I own, 420 friendly. Or the one across the street, it's not. Yeah. Perfectly fine. We can still have rules, but those are the areas that government has also monopolized. Yeah. Right? My name is Cal. Yeah, Jordan. Jordan, pleasure to meet you, hey, man. Nice I've got pamphlets you, man. if you like. Too bad it wasn't recording, man. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here as often every day. I y'all are having just a basic speech. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of good resources in the back of these pamphlets. Uh, and, and, and going these to the street market. Right Say again? You made these right here? Yeah. Yeah. Met him with uh, a couple of my friends, a lot of good ideas, and uh, trying to provide like some of the best kind of uh, allegory of the cave stuff. Um, gotcha. Stuff that, uh, and, and, and these state schools don't want to know. Right? You're like, oh, yeah. I study criminal justice here. I'm only allowed to think within that criminal justice box. I'm not allowed to think how a free market could provide a better form of security or justice, right? Uh, so, and that's how they, they keep us trapped in, in, in that politics, right? Yeah. So they don't allow you to think of polycentric legal systems, right? They don't allow you to think like a judge, for example, where you pay his salary, but when you go to court, he can hold you contempt for whatever reason, because he doesn't like the closer but I'm paying your salary. Yeah. Right, imagine if you go to like Geico and they come in there. No, he'll hold you in contempt and he'll throw you into a case. This happens to a lot of people. My cousin Vinny. You ever seen that movie? No. Yeah, but that... This with Joe Pesci, he plays a lawyer and he comes into court one day not dressed the way the judge wants. The judge wants him. Right? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, there's a guy, a lawyer, who didn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Attempt a court overnight in a cage. A lawyer. Right? I mean, for me, it's like, that's not the kind of judge I would want to provide something fair and impartial. Right? Yeah. Something that's not unbiased. Something that's not based on your feelings, but something of logic, something of reason. Not because of your preference, because you don't like what I'm wearing, especially if I'm paying your paycheck. Yeah. Right? Doesn't that's so that's an interesting relationship you have with government. It's top down. Right? It's political ruler, us tax slaves. <laughs> it's messed up, man. Yeah. It's messed up. I've been frustrated for years now, but I don't know what to do. I've kind of just learned to accept it. Right. <laughs> Well, I'm a part of an organization, a non-political organization, trying to turn to our community and turn away from the state, turn away from yeah. government, right? Yeah. Trying to find creative, non-violent solutions to providing the same services that the state has monopolized, right? There, there is a way out. There is a way to end the matrix. There is a way to finally end taxation. It'll probably take a few years, but you don't need to convince all of Richmond. You just need a strong uh, group of individuals who has the courage to stand up to that charity, and then together we can all say we're done paying taxes. One by one, if someone stops, yeah, they'll pick you off like ants. But when you're united, yeah, right, they can't stop that. When the voice right. is dissimilar, when everyone's calling the truth out for what it is, taxation is theft. Right. They'll probably label you as group of terrorists or something yeah. like that. But. No, they, they won't. But as long as we don't advocate for violence, they can't do anything. True. Right. True. Yeah. What are we doing? Just talking to each other. Yeah. Right. They can't stop that. Cool. Yeah, man. Well, nice talking. Of course, of course. Going to class. Absolutely, absolutely. Take good yeah. care, man. Yeah. I, I'm in the same line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good seeing you, man. Good seeing you. I'm glad you stopped by and listened. So that's the hidden violence. That's the immorality of government. That this organization, this matrix, only knows how to solve problems the one way, and that's to the threat us and use the violence. Versus the, the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Sure. What's your name? My name is Cal. Cal. I like what you're doing here, Cal. Thanks, man. Good work. Thanks. It's a great pitch. You did, did a good job. Thanks. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's all messed up, man. Right? I think that uh, you know, the way 
politicians do things, the way they, you know, banter and just like they're up in there trying to like formulate different types of legislation. But you know, the people out on the streets are the cops with the guns yeah. enforcing what they believe is the proper use of the legislation. It's this chain of command that, you know, leads to violence. Yeah. Leads to, you know, people doing more crime, trying to get out of certain things. You know, if you're starving, and you can't feed yourself, you're going to steal, you're going to get thrown in the cage. Right. You'll be met with more violence. Not so, trying to find any ways to help you out. Exactly. They'd not offer you any kind of alternative solutions out of that. Um, like there's a guy in D.C., he didn't pay $156 in property taxes. Government seized his home, threw him on the street. Well, it's just not cool, man. Yeah. It's not cool. Well, so, you said you had to go? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've got a meeting to get to. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, let me give you a chance to on your way out. Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. Well, keep up the good work. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you too. Okay. So that's the head and violence behind government. But this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? That makes sense. No, I just need yeah. to see your thoughts on it. <laughs> uh, and so that's, so that's what the state is, that's what government is. Um, and so what government has done objectively, they have monopolized the services I want, right? Government has monopolized law, courts, judges, security, currency. They've monopolized delivering pieces of paper, first class mail. I don't have the freedom to cancel. I don't have the freedom to unsubscribe. I don't have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services and say I could provide a better service to you that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's so that's uh, the inherent uh, violence and the immorality behind government, right? Okay. Because if it's wrong in you and me to initiate that force, you should universalize it, including government. Okay. Right? That makes sense. Well, thank you. Yeah, of course. My name is Cal. Atika. Atika. Nice I got pamphlets you. if you like. Sure. There you go. Very interesting. I was Thank just going to ask you, are you an anarchist? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, so like in science, anarchy makes sense. Anarchy means um, like anis and cations. An means without, archy means rulers. Okay. Like monarchy, one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. We can still have rules, but government has to monopolize the rules, right? They monopolize law. If you, if you have rules, and, I mean, At least we're going to disobey, like break the rules. Oh, no, how right. do you that? Okay, so the, the rules are consensual, unlike the monopoly on law the government has. These are rules you agree on. These are the rules you look at the contract for this community. But I like do, the But when we, but it's called, I forgot what it's called, but it's kind of called like the free agent policy where we give up certain rights, right? right? Like, in, like because we're protected under the Bill of Rights. Like we give up the right to certain freedoms of speech. We sure. give up the right to just kill somebody when we, you know, deem it necessary. Right. But I mean, that we give up those certain rights. Right. All right, so to yeah, be protected under the law. And then, you can, and then the, the great thing about that is, all right, some of your contract that you agree to that. Right. Like a mortgage contract, you sign your name. That's right. what I want. Free, diverse communities catering that to preferences. That's the U.S. It's not because well, the US, the, only 37 people signed it. They didn't ask the consent from the minorities, from black people, from women, from people who didn't own property. <laughs> it's a very tiny few, okay. right? So I want a real contract. Like so, Social Security, you're forced to have that service, whether you want it or not. You're forced to pay for it, even though when it's time for you to retire, you'll never have it. Right? Okay. So the thing I'm trying to say is that I want real contracts, real consent. But it's it's to benefit the many at the expense of the few. Right. Does that make sense? It like, does. Well, so, 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 right. so the greatest good for the majority is also the greatest evil for the minority. That's why it doesn't work. Your, people are forcing preferences now into each other. And the reason why it, it, it can't, you can't have rich, diverse communities, because that's not the way governments work. You have to force the majority preference, onto, the majority opinion onto everyone in geographic I region. mean, I come from a third world country, and this is probably, the, I mean, I'm not gonna say, like, obviously, like, this government has yeah. a lot of things that it could improve on, but this is probably, like, I'm allowed to say whatever I want, do whatever I want, in, like, a certain confined area. Like, right. I can't, like, just, go out with the AK-47 and start shooting in the air, you know, because I feel a certain way, but right. I mean, this oh, okay, is okay. I understand. pretty well, well that's, for me. I will come from a third world country, too. I'm from Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, and I will say that it's not good enough for me. Yeah. Uh, for my, for, for like my young brother, if he were to experiment with like cannabis right. and to, for him to be threatened, to be thrown, thrown into a cage for victimless crime, I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't feel comfortable with half... Real lobby, well, <laughs> well or, 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 so you can take that, right? But even if they legalize it tomorrow, so what? 75 years is not a measure of success to have gained one scrap of a freedom, to freedom to smoke a plant, but to have lost so many other freedoms in the same amount of time. It takes forever through politics. 
It takes yeah. forever to change. Nice. I want right, I want real change in my lifetime. Right. I don't want to die a slave. Right. <laughs> right? That makes sense. Well, have a great day. Yeah, of course, nice of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take good okay. care. So that's the hidden <laughs> violence behind government mm -hmm. and that this organization, the Matrix, only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. Yes. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that? Oh, the way you put it, it sounds pretty fucked up, so... <laughs> <laughs> don't think I... <laughs> don't know if I thought of it in that sense, right? cause, I mean, when you describe jail as a cage, which it is, so I agree with you. Yeah. But you never hear of it that way. Right. No, so. it's just like breaking it down objectively, yeah. right? Breaking it down, it's like almost breaking it down the way a child would understand it. Right. Which it makes you consider different things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and government does a good job hiding the language. Mm -hmm. um, you're not allowed to steal, but we'll call it taxes. Yeah. <laughs> you're not I can't ask you for your money, but they can. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I could, but you could say no. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and then uh, even if I said no, Government will say, well, we're still going to take it from you. Anyways. Yes. Right. Or put you in jail. All right. Um, all right, cool. All right. So that's, yeah, yeah brutally, that's what it is objectively. Mm -hmm. And even further objectively, government has monopolized the services I want. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I still want law. I still want security. I still want judges and roads and currency. But these mm -hmm. are the areas government has monopolized. Yes. They don't allow the, like, even delivering pieces of paper, first class stuff. Yeah. Right. I don't have the freedom to unsubscribe, cancel, <laughs> withdraw my payment. I don't have the freedom to compete against mm -hmm. those monopolized services. You know what? I could provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful. Yeah. And abusive to you, the consumer. And generally, I mean, in any like basic, like business course, they're going to tell you monopolies are bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go after the biggest monopoly. Yeah. I think it's even like, um, like when you're talking about like 1920s, yeah. and it's like, well, the Rockefellers, they took over everything. And it's like, well, every little kid will be like, well, that's wrong. You they should have free market, yeah. all that. So, the but you don't ever talk about the government in those yeah. classes. Yeah. And, and and it's the biggest monopoly that exists, um, especially in terms of like defense, especially in terms of uh, justice. Um, you know, there are like other like private defense and private armies that are a bit fucked up too. But uh, okay, all right. So so like yeah. um, like Blackwater, for example. Like uh, Blackwater would not exist without government. Mm -hmm. So government has to like for standing armies, you need a tax system, right? Mm -hmm. Without a government, there's no taxes. You can't fund a standing <laughs> army. Uh, there's no Blackwater. Blackwater gets their money from the grants to come from taxes. Yes. Um, well, I think it's um, Exxon Mobil, which they have. Um, like they're they're worldwide. They're everywhere. Yeah. They have their own standing army as well. Right. But like, why why do they need a standing That's army? That's true. Oh, okay, okay. So like, in terms of like those big corporations, mm -hmm. those two would not exist without government. Mm -hmm. All a corporation is this is a piece of paper back and, and forth by government. And they are is they're very involved. They have people in the government. Lobbying they have their all own. the time. Yeah. It's not even so much. I mean, they, I'm sure they have lobbyists as well, yeah. but they also just have people that would go in and sit yeah. on and voice their opinion. Right. That to help themselves. Right. So that, and why that's would they not want to help themselves? Now? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and that's how they control innovation and technology, prevent new emerging technology from coming out. Like the Tesla automobile runs on electricity. Like the, the markets, like in North Carolina or sometimes in Texas, are trying to prevent them from entering because they have their vested interests in like Exxon and Mobile um, with those political connections that they have. Um, so that's like if you want to uh, outcompete your, your your competitor, you do it through government, right? You pass a law that uh, only applies to them, not yeah. to you. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. I'm just this pretty much the free market will provide. Yeah. Um, people will build stuff. I mean, people like like Rose, for example, is businesses to build them to begin with. Mm -hmm. Government uh, is just the middleman, the, uh, the middleman yeah. mafia that takes their money and gives it to who they think mm -hmm. is, can do it best for you, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, cool. Are you good? All right. Um, any any last things? Okay. Yeah, well, I guess. What else you got? <laughs> um, all right. So. This principle that, that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that it's wrong and immoral to initiate it, uh, that has to be applied universally, right? Mm -hmm. Extending to everyone, no matter what title or color costume you wear, yeah. right? So, especially for those who claim to call themselves the government, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so you'll find then that government itself uh, is immoral because it violates that very principle mm -hmm. that you re-universalize. Like, you re-universalize like the theory of gravity, like thermodynamics, yeah. right? Um, so that's already uh, an irrational position to take uh, from government standpoint of view. Because they say again, it's wrong for you to murder, we'll call it organized war. Yes. Right. Um, cool, all right. That's pretty cool, yeah. yeah uh, well, all I right. got pamphlets to go like. Sure, yeah. I'll take a pamphlet for all it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably gonna sit down and smoke another cigarette as well, yeah, so yeah, I'll yeah. continue to hang out with you. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, and so I'm part of a non political organization called okay. Liberdovier. Right, um, cool. We have a party this Saturday, philosophy, potluck, right. the works. Potluck. Oh, <laughs>
<laughs> I make awesome food. <laughs> we made white chocolate Oreo fudge the other day. So, oh yeah. Yeah? It's oh, that sounds awesome. really good. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Nice. Yeah. I like that. All right, cool. cool. I got everyone in my office addicted to it. Yeah? yeah. Sam, right? Yes, yeah, Sam. Does cool. it count? Yes. I, I remember. I'm surprised <laughs> I remember. Me too. <laughs>